Okay, we are on section 4.2, log arithmetic functions. So go ahead and copy this down in your journal. All exponential functions have inverse functions. Okay, in math, we're always learning to do something and then we're learning how to undo it. And those are inverses. So exponential functions have inverse functions. So we're going to find that inverse function. So this is a little bit of a review about how to find inverse functions. So we are going to use this f of x equals b to the x power, because that's our exponential function. So we're learning to undo it. So we are going to do the inverse. So to find the inverse function of this f of x equals bx, Step one, replace f of x with y. So we have this f of x equals bx, so we're going to say y equals b to the x power. That's our exponential function. That's what we learned yesterday. Next step, interchange x and y. So that would be x equals b to the y power. And then your final step to find the inverse function would be to solve for y. But how in the world do you solve this for y? We're going to rewrite this as by equals x. And we want to get it to say y equals. So I'm just going to give you what it is um, because we haven't learned this yet. So what it is is if you do like this, y'all remember this if you've been in pre-cal with Miss Lyles, you do log base b of x equals y. This is a base b. This is a property that goes along with exponential and log functions and them being inverses of one another. So the inverse of the exponential function is called the logarithmic function. So here is our logarithmic function. We have log base b of x equals y. This is the log function.
And this is our inverse of the exponential function when we reverse or interchange x and, x and y. Okay. So the requirements for the logarithmic function is x has to be greater than 0, and b has to be greater than 0. And B cannot equal one. Those are the requirements. So B is called your base, okay? Base B. So we're going to convert between log form and exponential form by doing this, which you can do the same thing here. So you start at B and then you do a circle around and you would do a log base B of X because X is your second thing that you go on whenever you curve around equals whatever it says um, the Y value is, the exponential at x, no, exponent I mean. So we are going to convert from the log form, which is like this, to the exponential form. You're going to learn how to convert back and forth between the two forms. They're equivalent, but it's easier to solve this than it is a log base B of X. So we need to convert between the two of them. You can plug this in the calculator, but we can do this without the calculator. All right. So whenever you have it in this form, I want you to put the log first. So log base B of X equals Y. So that way you can convert it easy. And the way you convert it is you start at the base, then you curve around till you get back to what's beside log base B. So when you do that, the easiest way to remember is you do B of Y equals X. B, our base, exponent Y equals X. And then you can convert back doing the same thing. So I'm going to convert it back to log. You're going to take this, curve around, so if we're in exponent, exponent form, then we would do log base B, because B is your first one, X equals Y. See how they're equivalent if you follow that same thing? You keep your um, log on the left side and you have your base with your exponent on the left side. If it's reversed, then you flip it. And so we'll do some examples and it'll, um, more practice will make sense. Okay, so here are our examples. We'll just start with the first one. Just write your first one. Log base 5 of x equals 2. So we're going to use the little um, tool here of looping around. So this means we're going to do, we're going from log to exponent form. So this will be our base. Five is our base. Squared equals X. Okay, the next one, log base B64 equals three.
So that would be b cubed equals 64. So we're not solving them yet. We'll get to solving them um, just in a few minutes. But we are just converting them from one form to the other. And the next one, start at the base, curve around. Your first number is what you start with. So it would be 3 to the y equals 7. Okay, the next one, see how it's reversed? I need to put log first, so I'm going to rewrite it. Log base 2, 16 equals 4. In order for this uh, spiral to work, we've got to have log first. Okay, so start your base, loop around. So that would be 2 to the fourth equals 16. Is that true? 2 to the fourth equals 16. Okay, the next one, it had the number first, so we're going to rewrite it. So this would be b cubed equals 27. Okay, so we know how to change from log to exponent. So now we're going to go from exponent to log. Yes, ma'am? Hey. Okay, I'll, I'll see you then. Bye. Okay, so on this one, we want to do um, the base and exponent should be on the left side. And that way we can do our loop around with the base being the first number that we start our loop with. So we'd go around like this. So since we're changing from exponential to logarithmic, we would do log base 12 of x equals 2. Two hundred equals seven raised to the y power. So we need to rewrite it so that we have our base and exponent first. So this will be seven y to the y power equals two hundred. And then to start at our base, loop around to our exponent. So it'll be log base 7 of 200 equals y. Okay, b to the third equals 8. So it already has our base and exponent on the left side. So we can loop around. So log base b of 8 equals 3. Okay. So next one, 1 over 25 equals 5 raised to the negative 2. So we need to rewrite it. So 5 raised to the negative 2 equals 1 over 25. We're going to write it as a log function or log equation. Start at the base, loop around. That would be log base 5 of 1 over 25. 
equals negative 2. Okay, e to the y equals 9. So be log base e of 9 equals y. The next one, can we write 16 as a, um, like square root of 16 needs to be written with an exponent. What is the exponent whenever you have a square root? Do y'all remember that? What does that mean? Yeah, it has a fraction. It's like this is 1 and this is 2. Do you remember that? So this would be 16 to the 1 half equals 4. So we needed to convert it before, um, before we're able to do the loop and then transfer it to a log function. So we would do log base 16 f4 equals 1 half. All right, now we are going to actually solve these functions. So evaluating logs. I should have a few of those to do. So we have log base 5, 1 fifth equals x. So we're converting this to, so convert to exponent form. So we would do 5 raised to the x equals 1 fifth. In order to solve this, we need to have them to have the same base. So we're going to leave this 5 to the x by itself. We're going to convert this so it has a base of 5. In order to get a base of 5, it'd have to have a negative, um, a, a negative exponent. This 1 fifth can be written as 5 to the negative 1. That's its equivalent. So we'll rewrite this as 5 to the x equals 5 to the negative 1. And if we're solving for x, then we would need to have same bases, which we already do. Then you can just look at what the exponents are and we see that x equals negative 1. We can do like this because they have the exact same base. We get x equals negative 1. Okay, um, let's look at this one. Log of 2, square root of our fifth root of 2. And we're going to say equals x so that we can solve for it. If it doesn't have that it equals anything, we're trying to find out what that is. So we go ahead and say equals some variable. So turn it around. So that would be 2 raised to the x equals fifth root of 2. Now we need to have these to have the same base. So fifth root of two, we need to rewrite that. So this is similar to our square root. When you do square root, you can put do the exponent of one half. So then this one, the exponent would be two to the one fifth. So 
So you have the same basis. So X equals one fifth. Okay, the ne next one, log base 2, 16. We needed to say it equals some variable, so we can say equals x. So curve it around. So we get 2 to the x equals 16. So we need to convert this 16 to have a base of 2. So 2 raised to what value will give you 16? 2 to the 4th power. Okay. So then we'd rewrite it 2 to the x power equals 2 to the 4th power. So that means x equals 4. Okay, log base 7 of 149. Okay, so this equals x. So this would be 7 raised to the x power equals 1 over 49. So we need to apply some properties dealing with exponents. So how can we have an exponent, I mean a base of 7? What could we do with this 49? What does that equal? 1 over 7 squared. But then how do we get the 7 squared on top? 7 to the negative 2. So that means 7 raised to the x power equals 7 to the negative 2 power. And so x equals negative 2. Okay, not about done. Okay, so then our last thing is just general properties dealing with log, log functions. Okay, so instead of just taking these as true, um, we can see how they work. It's pretty um, simple if we convert it to that exponential form. So on this first one, log base b of 1 equals 0. So if we do the conversion, we get b of 0 equals 1. That means any value raised to the 0 power equals 1. Is that true? So that's one of those exponent rules. If you have a power of zero, it equals one. Okay, then the next one, log base b of b equals one. So if we do our uh, conversion, we get b to the first power equals b. Is that true? Well, those are the same thing, b to the first equals b. Yeah, because anything to the first power is just itself. Okay, the next one, log base b b of x equals x log i mean b 
raised to the x equals b of x. Same thing, right? And then our last one, this is converting exponential to log. So you do log base B of X equals log base B of X. So these are pretty simple to see that they are true just by converting them to the exponential or to the log. Okay, the last thing is common log logarithmic function is the log base 10. That is our um, common one. Log base 10. So anytime you don't see a base, go ahead and put a 10 in there to help you remember. So log base 10 of X is the same thing as just saying log of X. So tomorrow we'll graph these. So I'm going to give you the rest of the class period to work on assignments, either 4-1 or 4-2. I'm about to post 4-2.